helpful. Now coming to the accommodation part, uh, again, when you're talking, uh, maybe uh, I think I was 14, uh, around uh, maybe 94, 90s I'm talking, okay? So those times accommodation used to be in thatched herds, you know, whatever is available. Some places there is nothing available, so only tents were there. So the journey was really hard. And I'm sure, you know, when we are thinking of all these things, we are remembering our uh, stories of autobiography of a yogi house. Uh, you know, uh, the great master has gone there. Uh, how Swami Rama in the Himalayan yogi has, you know, gone there. All these things we are thinking. And they used to take like three months. And for them, the Tirth Yatra was whatever is available, they surrender. But nowadays, things are very different. You know, uh, once you, you know, fr from Kathmandu, you, ca you can get like up till uh, five-star hotel accommodation. And uh, till Saga, you are getting minimum three to four-star accommodation. So accommodation is very uh, uh, nice up till Saga, you know, and if you are going through Lhasa, Lhasa, two to three star accommodation, then Sigatse, and then up till uh, Mansarovar, it's a straight road. Because Mansarovar, it's basic accommodation, right? That is the challenge, you know, and uh, I think the, the, the Tibetans didn't want it to actually bring a lo lot of luxury into those areas because... Uh, First of all, you, you know, these are the, the lands of the gods and we don't want to disturb these lands with a lot of construction, building constructions and all that, right? So they wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So you have these thatched huts, very basic accommodation where you just need to go and sleep because the other entire day you are out. Either you are going and visit, visiting Milarapa cave or you are going to the monastery there or you are just to, sitting near the uh, uh, Mansarovar and for Kailash Yatra when you are going you know Kala so Kailash and Mansarovar has a distance of like 30 kilometers so you need like one hour to reach to Darchin. Darchin is the place where the Kailash Yatra starts. Now Darchin is a great city again in Darchin you get three to four star accommodation. So there is no problem in accom accommodation if you uh, <laughs> if you're not choosing the yatra because once the parikrama starts again it's very basic accommodation that you get you know these kind of challenges makes us you know makes this journey authentic right we we are too much in our um, you know ac rooms and we are too much attached to our uh, comfort so it is not a uh, like a five star trip luxury trip actually to be honest, but of course we can choose according to um, you know what we want. So uh, I personally believe we need to have uh, acceptance level mindset and uh, focusing on Kailasha, focusing on the Lord, focusing on the energies there. That what is uh, that what matters because we are energy beings, and if we can exist there as energy beings, we'll be connected to the energies there. We won't be co connecting to the physicalities that, that are present there. So that's my understanding about uh, the accommodation because yes, you know, we want hot water for bath. Uh, we want uh, good food. Uh, we want, um, you know, nice bed and uh, all that. Up till that chain, you get it. Uh, one option is if, if it's really important for you because yes, some people there, uh, physically, you know, they are restricted. They can't do it. So they can go up till Darchin, you know, and uh, you can take a vehicle and do the Kailash Parikrama with a vehicle. That's also an option. The second option could be just going to Dirapuk, taking a horse or maybe a little walk. If you are okay, 11 to 12 kilometers of walking, going to Dirapuk and just see the grandeur of the great Kailash, you know, you can see that and again, come back to Darchin. So Parikrama is always an option. It is uh, not something that you will be, uh, you know, that's not something that is mandatory there. 